Hello, everyone. Welcome to another edition of Florida's Fourth Estate. This one we're calling Florida's Fourth Estate Wild Edition, and you're going to figure out why in just a moment. I'm Ginger Gadsden. That's Matt Austin. We are so excited to be here because as soon as we heard this story, we're like, we have to do this because it's like an only in Florida, but <laughs> multiply it hundreds of times. You've heard of Girls Gone Wild. Well, this <laughs> is Anchors Gone Wild. No, it's nothing like that. We're actually like talking place. about the crazy <laughs> exotic animals Floridians sometimes bring into their homes and maybe... Yeah. They don't secure them very well. Maybe they're not supposed to have them in the first place. But believe it or not, all of this is tracked. And our investigator, Mike DeForest, has cracked the code. He has kind of put it all in one place. So if you want to know, hey, is my neighbor, did I just see a cougar in my neighbor's backyard? Does he have a wild serval or a tiger? Well, he is the man sort of tracking it. Putting it all in one place. He's built a map for you that we're going to show you. And we want to say just, just, hi. Just call me Ace Ventura Pet Reporter. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds good. Uh, but you are a little less crazy than that. Jose, good to see you. He's streaming with us. And Mary from Pell City, Alabama, joining us on our stream. We're so glad to have you with us. So, Mike. Yeah, I'm always interested in how people, like, Mike does a variety of stories. And they're always great. And you're, he's always, like, running someone down. I want to know how this came, this story came to light. Cause it, if we're like, oh my gosh, what a perfect story. And we all click well, on that. Ginger, map. it was actually, it was about uh, maybe five or six years ago. Um, you may recall a cobra escaped in Orlando. It was later found, I think, behind somebody's dryer, one of his neighbor's yes. dryers. And uh, that is, it, that cobra even, somebody had created, somebody unrelated created a Twitter account for the escaped Cobra. And, uh, but it, it was a serious issue and it got us uh, thinking about how often do these animals escape? So it was about five, six years ago, we did a, an investigation looking at uh, all the escaped animals. People were really interested by our findings. And so we thought, hey, it's been five, six years since we looked, let's take a look at the last five, six years. And uh, that was the report that we uh, recently published. It I remember when they found that cobra behind a dryer and uh, my wife, I don't think she was ever going to do laundry again. Fortunately, <laughs> she has. But we're, these are just clips from your package that we've put in here of the different animals that have somehow escaped. We could see a Look zebra running one. on what looks like a huge beach, but it's actually... Yeah, that's not that's not the Serengeti. That was a construction <laughs> site in Hillsborough County. And, and it's just all these crazy stories. Did any of them jump out at you as the most wild? I think there was just such a wide variety because uh, you have people who keep uh, animals as pets. You have some people who actually have wildlife sanctuaries basically in their backyard. And then uh, some of these escapes happened at accredited zoos. Uh, we mm -hmm. found a, an elephant. How does an elephant escape? There's one that belonged to the Jacksonville Zoo. It used to belong to Michael Jackson at the Neverland Ranch. Uh, Jacksonville Zoo got it. And uh, appears that uh, a gate got left open. Now, this elephant was not running through the zoo. It was still within uh, the contained area of where animals are allowed. But it wasn't where it was supposed to be. So we saw everything uh, from uh, an elephant escaping to one of those little tiny meerkats at Disney's Animal Kingdom. You know, they've got that man-made rock work. And it looks like this crafty meerkat found some of the rock work that made just a very convenient ramp. And it ran up it. And then uh, I guess when the workers all descended on the escaped meerkat, uh, they were on their walkie-talk and that must have scared the meerkat to go back into the exhibit. So it, di it didn't cause any issues. Disney then quickly fixed that man-made rock work to ensure it wouldn't happen again. But those are in accredited zoos. Not to mention, these are people who own pets. Uh, sometimes you have to have licenses for these exotic mm -hmm. pets. Sometimes people had the pets and they didn't have the licenses like a cougar that got loose in Parkland, Florida. And you saw some photos of it running around some trash cans and it eventually had to be captured by FWC. The owner of that received a, a flurry of citations. So we see all kinds of animals in all kinds of situations escaping. That's crazy because I mean, a cougar, a meerkat, you think, okay, it's kind of cute. It's not really that dangerous, but any wild animal is, but you're th talking about a cougar. This, it could have gone sideways in a heartbeat, but 
You asked about the noteworthy one and the one uh, part of our research into this was not just pulling records, but uh, Florida Fish and Wildlife Conservation officers who respond to these will occasionally wear body camera videos. So we were able to see their interactions with some of these owners. And the one that really struck me, uh, I think it happened about a year ago up uh, in near Tallahassee. And it was a guy who owned an 11 foot long green or yellow anaconda. Now, apparently at the time, uh, he first acquired this anaconda. It was legal in Florida for him to own without a permit. The laws recently changed in a couple of years. That's now considered a prohibited species. No one can have a yellow anaconda, uh, presumably because of the harm that it can do to the environment if ever were to get out. That thing is an eating machine and uh, can wreak havoc on the environment, like we're seeing with the pythons down in South Florida. So nonetheless, mm -hmm. uh, he still had this, apparently did not then obtain a permit to legally keep it, even though he would have been grandfathered in. But here's the catch. Uh, it was about a year ago or so. Uh, he said he kept it on his back porch, screened in back porch, but that back porch, unfortunately, had a hole in it. So this 11 foot long anaconda escapes and uh, FWC hears about this. And uh, the wildlife officer shows up at the man's house, knocks on the door. The guy doesn't immediately come to the door, but the wildlife officer looks over on the porch and there on the porch is this object, this 11 foot long object. It was the snake skin. The snake had shed its skin before taking off. So you can see how big this snake was, this anaconda. FWC officer questions the man. He admits, yeah, I usually babysit it when it's on the back porch, but this time I, I didn't pay attention, I admit, and it got away. I've been looking for it. I can't find it. Oh, by the way, Mr. FWC officer, this thing is dangerous. He admits, <laughs> the owner admits this thing is aggressive towards people, um, that it bites. Um Mike, we sure. actually have that body cam video. This is the shirtless guy, right? Yes. Okay, let's play that for you because this really jumped out to me as, uh, I shouldn't laugh at it, but just take a look. So you said you, the snake got away? Um, uh, yeah, she can be dangerous. So I, <laughs> the part of the interview where he's like, uh, yeah. we've all been there. Uh, yeah, and she can yeah, be dangerous. Can be Here's the thing that amazed me about that, Matt, though. So uh, they he ends up admitting that, yeah, my snake got out and FWC cited him. Uh, he had uh, some misdemeanors for allowing the escape to happen, not securing the cage and owning a prohibited species without a permit. Um, but they never found the snake right away. I think ultimately it was about four months later, or it was about three months later, four miles away. This dude was in his garage and he's closing the garage door and the garage door just stops. He's like, why did the garage door stop? So he opens it up <laughs> there, he goes over there and there's the the green, the 11 foot long, 11 anaconda, half in and half out of his garage. Oh my God. Um, apparently he gets, I think it was his son-in-law involved and they basically decide to shoot it. Um, and they did a, a Google search, I think, and it saw something from FWC saying, hey, if you find a yellow anaconda, let us know. Uh, so they contacted, they were able to look at some photos and they confirmed it was the same snake. So this thing had traveled four miles four away miles? As, the or as the snake slithers um, and got in this dude's garage. And that's the end of that story. But uh, and the end of that snake. That is terrifying because I'm just trying to think of all the places that snake has visited in between you know, it's probably lurking under someone's porch or in someone's yard while the kids are playing. I don't think it caught an Uber four miles away. It has just been out there in the wild living its life. And it's not the snake's fault. It's these people who can't handle. You know what I I really think about, Mike and, and Matt? The people who are not even reporting that they have animals that have escaped. These are the people who get caught. But I bet there are some out there, many, who have animals escape and you never hear a peep out of it. They're not calling the happens. police if they oh. have some crazy exotic animal that they so, Mike, we have to imagine this happens a lot more than we actually hear about and that is documented. FWC acknowledges that. So um, the rules differ based on the type of animal you own. Um, there are certain animals you're not allowed to own, or if you do have them, you have to have a license. And if you have one of these licensed animals, depending on the, the species, there may be a legal requirement that if it escapes, 
you have to report it to FWC. And the reason the state wants to know is, A, these can potentially be harmful to people, but as we mentioned before, they can be potentially harmful to the environment. So if you have a certain species, it gets out. First of all, you have a legal requirement to report it if it escapes. That just goes to show you violated another legal requirement, which is to secure the animal. Um, and then depending on whether you had the proper uh, permits or not. So um, we, we see all kinds, but even FWC admits that uh, even licensed uh, animal owners may not report it because they're concerned about the sanctions that can follow. Now, mm -hmm. even though jail time is possible, in most cases we found if they either receive a warning or they may receive some fines, misdemeanor charges. Uh, every case is a little bit different, but they say they acknowledge that there's probably more escapes that happen than are actually reported to FWC. And Mike, one of the things I loved about your story is online, if you're curious <laughs> about your neighbors having an escape, you don't have to read it about it on the Nextdoor app, which by the way, if I ever read on the Nextdoor app, watch out for an 11 foot anaconda. The Austins are moving, move. baby. Yeah, we're getting <laughs> time to get our Zillow subscription on. But so this is a fascinating uh, map that you made. And as you kind of like scroll over, you can see uh, it shows you what, okay, over here in Oviedo, there's a green amoeba. I don't know what that is. We've got a ball what python is? escaped and fairway What's an amoeba? What he said, what an amoeba. What uh, is it, Mike? Um, I think it's a lizard. Okay. Oh. All right. Well, a lemur. We've got a lemur that escaped. St. Cloud. Do you live in St. Cloud? There's a kinkajou. A kinkajou. What is that? What's a kinkajou? Oh, I know. Is it a... I, I know what it looks like. I don't. I think it's a. Is it a primate? I'm not sure, but it's a. <laughs> I was gonna uh, say it looks like a, a kangaroo, but I think it's just because it sounds like kangaroo. It's, but I thought, me. it's not. Uh, I think I it's a know. monkey. <laughs> looks like a monkey. It, yes, oh, this okay. is it right here. That thing's <laughs> cute. Okay, see, I don't care as much about that as much as. I'm terrified of someone having a lion or something next door. What did you think when you put together this map, Mike? I, it was our web team at uh, clickorlando.com that did it. But I, and basically how we did it was uh, we uh, put in a public records request with Florida Fish and Wildlife Conservation Commission. They provided with us a, a spreadsheet that showed the locations of these escapes and the animals and a brief description uh, of what happened. And again, I was just struck by the, the, the number of them. There was about a little more than 200 over the course of five or six years. And again, these are the ones that were either properly reported to FWC by the owner who said... Like that guy showed, ugh, uh, like animal got out. Although that guy did not report it to FWC. And that's what we did find too, is in some cases, it wasn't the owner of the escaped animal notifying the state. It was the neighbor who found it in their yard who notified oh, it. One of the cases that, that happened, uh, it was here in Orange County. Uh, there used to be for many, many years, decades, this uh, wildlife sanctuary out in uh, East Orange County uh, where people who just had animals they couldn't care for anymore were dropped off. And uh, this guy uh, who owned a Jim Bronzo provided a service to the community and to the animals to care for those. But unfortunately, there were circumstances where the animals escaped from this wildlife sanctuary. In this particular case, it was a Asian water monitor. Um, the neighbor whose yard it ended up thought it was a Komodo dragon. It's not, uh, but it's this four. It's big, plus, right? Well, it's big. Um, and interestingly, in that case, uh, based on what the FWC officer was uh, telling the neighbor, uh, the owner did not need a, a state license for this. Um, and likewise was not under a legal obligation to report mm -hmm. its escape. Now, there was a legal obligation to secure that animal. And in that particular case with this wildlife sanctuary, the owner... He told FWC, I think I got burglarized. I came in one day and all the cages were open. I think somebody broke into my property and opened the cages. Now, he never reported that to law enforcement. Um, when the FWC officer came to check out the cage, although he could not dispute the owner's claim that somebody opened the cage, he also noticed that at the bottom of the cage, that big four-foot lizard could have easily pushed the very loose door and let itself out. And, uh, so oh, that too I'm going to call another right. animal on that story. It's a bull. <laughs> <laughs> His bull oh got my up. gosh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So do you remember one of our co-anchors, Lisa Bell, comes out of her house one day in the backyard and she looks over at her neighbor's roof and there is, I think it was a bow constrictor and it might've been like four or five feet long, just dangling from the roof. And it was there for hours until I think, think someone who specializes in wildlife had to come get that thing. 
I, I don't remember that story. And now I'm fascinated to know how did the snake get up there? Did it crawl or did I, a uh, like a, a raptor pick we it were up? And then wondering the same my thing. Fear in life is that Correct. a snake's going to fall from the sky when a bird drops it on me when I'm out kayaking or something. That's one of yeah, your fears you, in life, Mike DeForest. Yeah. I never would have guessed <laughs> who, that about you. Who knew? I, I didn't think you. I thought you were so thing. sensible. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I, I think the story is very interesting. And I think that in some cases, like we found uh, there are these monkeys in DeBerry where they had this wasn't a part of Mike's story, but this was uh, some monkeys that were a part of a, an old film or a zoo or something. They got released when people left town and they just kind of started their own little colony in this area, and now they're out there almost like wild monkeys again, enjoying themselves. But these creatures, Mike, aren't supposed to be in the state of Florida. We've got the pythons down in the Everglades. Have you heard from anybody about the real damage these creatures can do when they get here and then they have, they basically become the apex predator, right? Well, yeah, these are non-native species. I think the pythons down in South Florida are, are the biggest example of when mm -hmm. animals go wild and go wrong. And these are believed to either be people's pets that they let out because they couldn't care for them. Or I think it was Hurricane Andrew is believed to have damaged homes that these mm -hmm. snakes got out and then started reproducing. And the problem is then they do take over. They eat the rabbits. Uh, which then uh, are food for other animals there. And it just changes the whole ecosystem. And, and that's a, a big concern you have when these uh, non-native species get loose and, and wreak havoc. There's always the danger to people too, if it's an animal that is not native to Florida. And there's a lot of dangerous animals native to Florida, rattlesnakes. Um, but then you've got these other creatures that weren't here before it certainly can hurt people. But I think the bigger concern is just what does it do to the environment and the circle of life? That's true. That's true. And some of them can carry diseases, too. And that's another issue because people we say, oh, these little things are cute. But if they're carrying diseases, then that's also another danger because it could go from animals to people or, or whatever. Who knows? So and, and just the danger. Um, you could be in your backyard and one of these these escape creatures could get you. But as we found out in one of our stories, you can be in Home Depot and get attacked by one of these animals, too. One of the stories, uh, uh, it happened down in Okeechobee. It was a, a licensed uh, spider monkey, I believe. And uh, apparently spanky? the owner, this is Spanky. Spanky the spider monkey. <laughs> apparently Spanky, I, my understanding is Spanky is a YouTube star. Uh, apparently so there's some videos of spanky on the internet uh not this particular one though where uh, spanky uh went on a, a shopping spree at home depot or at least the owner did and uh, apparently spanky got loose this was now this uh, from my understanding from the reports this was the second time that spanky got loose at home depot um i don't know what happened the first time but then the second time monkey gets loose and apparently attacks one of the home depot workers uh, scratches her face, scratches her back, scratches her arm. We had a little segment of an interview in there where uh, she said that when the owner came into Home Depot, uh, basically said something like, don't make me grab my gun. Uh, and to which this <laughs> Home Depot employee, what, what's a gun going to do to stop this monkey? So um, always interesting stories. But in this case, it was Home Depot. There was a monkey on the loose. They captured it. And uh, can I just say it. for anyone who's about to Google spanky monkey YouTube, uh, don't no. do it. I just did Probably it not. and it leads to some very, some very strange uh, things. <laughs> so uh, one of our friends, Jason Geller is asking, Matt, should the general public be concerned about my pythons? Um, he's talking about his arms and this is a friend of mine. He, he doesn't know wow. the general public has nothing to be concerned about. Um, so the, this is basically uh, the gist of it is that folks in Florida, we know there's some wild people around here who have some wild animals and most certainly those things are getting out. So if you want to check it out, Mike, what's the best way for them to find that map that the Clicko team created? Just look for this story on clickorlando.com, Animal Escapes, and you'll, you'll find that map. And something I want to point out, Matt, that's important is um, Florida Fish and Wildlife Conservation Commission, they want to be proactive about this, particularly with these animals that have licenses. They work closely with the owners to ensure that the, the cages are secure. There's very strict state guidelines, depending on the animal you have, as to how these animals are supposed to be uh, uh, 
uh, secured. And FWC works with these licensed animal owners to make sure their cages are secure. They try to be proactive about this. And, and we saw that in these cases that the FWC comes, they want to help out these people. They have a right to own these animals as long as they're permitted properly and they've met all the requirements. Uh, but occasionally animals do what they do and want to get out and they look for those they little escape. tiny openings or big openings to get out. All right. Well, it's time for us to escape, Ginger. Right. We got to get out. Yeah, this has been, I, I've loved this. I've learned a lot about it. And that map is just so useful. So click on it, guys. Just go to clickorlando.com. Mike DeForest, thank you so much for sharing your insight and those stories. I loved hearing them. It's a jungle out there. <laughs> <laughs> Have a great week. Florida's Fourth Estate will be back next week. Creeping you out with something else. Have a great one. Bye.